Hello, my name is Dr. Timothy Plett. I'm a professor here at Bakersfield College. Despite my youth, I am indeed a professor. Uh, my students sometimes get a kick out of me fooling them on the first day of class. If I just slip into the lecture and I'm wearing a backpack, nobody notices, it's kind of fun. But today I'm gonna to be introducing to you a physical principle called center of mass. Now you've actually probably interacted with this idea of center of mass before. If you've ever tried to find something called the balance point on an object, this is what we would refer to as the center of mass. And the basic idea about it is it's a point on an object around which everything is laid out in such a way that if you hold it at this exact point, then it won't move. It'll just hang there motionless. Now for a regular shaped object like a square or a triangle, it's really easy to guess where this idea of a balance point is. You just move your finger toward the middle and it'll just hold there without any difficulty. See, really easy, right in the dead center. However, this idea of center of mass is not so easy when you take an irregular shaped object like this one. And this is something you can do at home. It's a very simple process. You just take a piece of cardboard, cut out any sort of crazy shape you want, and then you can find what the center of mass is. Now, if you try to sort of put your finger around on different points where you might think it works out, it's not going to be that easy um, because it's such an irregular looking shape. So how exactly do we find this? Well, the idea of center of mass comes from a principle in physics called torque. And you spell torque, T-O-R-Q-U-E. Now the idea of torque is that you are applying force on a lever arm. So if I were to draw out something like a teeter-totter, you have a particular point which we refer to as the pivot. And around this point, the entire object spins. So what happens is if you apply force, at one end of the pivot, you invoke this idea of spinning. Now, with a teeter-totter, you're stopped by the ground, of course. But if the ground weren't there, and you're just hanging in space, you would just see this thing start spinning in the clockwise direction. And this tendency to spin, this is what we call torque. And objects experience this just as the same as you or me. All we need to do is pick a point on that object about which it can exert this torque, exert this spin. So if I were to take this object and stick it out like this with my finger held here as the pivot point, we would expect, well, that thing is just going to swing down. And indeed it does, obviously, because you have all of this force on this side pulling it so that it will spin. And then it eventually comes to stop because, well, I'm pushing on it on the wall, so friction is slowing it down. But it's this idea we can use to find the center of mass. Because when we hold it, now it's not spinning anymore. So what must be the case? Well, if it's not spinning, then that means there has to be an equal and opposite force pushing it the other way. And so if we go back to our teeter-totter, this would be the same as if we had another person on this side also pushing down with force. And the result of that is two competing torques that cancel each other out. And so the end result is what we in physics refer to as equilibrium. And equilibrium is when all of your force and all of your torque is balanced out. And when this happens, you have two options. One, you are either completely motionless or you're moving with a constant velocity in accordance with Newton's first law. An object at rest will remain at rest and an object moving with a constant speed 
will continue moving at a constant speed unless acted on by an outside force. Now you might be wondering, what does equilibrium have to do with this idea of center of mass? Well, again, the idea of the balance point is, it's a system that is not moving. So it is a system that is in equilibrium. So we use this principle of equilibrium to determine what the balance point is. And how you can do this at home, it's very simple. Just cut out a shape from a piece of cardboard and then attach a weight to a piece of string. This is all you need, and you can calculate the center of mass for any object. Don't believe me? Here's how you do it. You might also want a Sharpie for this. <laughs> all you do is hold the object loosely so that it achieves this state of equilibrium. Then you hold this plumb line at that point until it also reaches equilibrium. And what you'll see is that it forms a line on the piece of cardboard. And then what you do is mark two points of the line on the piece of cardboard. So a point there, a point there, and then you can draw a line. So let me just grab a straight edge here. And I'll draw that line for you. Step one complete. So this gives us an axis of equilibrium when we hold it at this particular point. We're not quite done yet. We need a second point in order to complete the drawing. So we then hold it at a second point. We again achieve that equilibrium result. We then take our plumb line, hold it at that pivot point, and then we see that there's a point where they intersect. That intersection, when we draw those two lines, represents the center of mass because we have found two axes of equilibrium for that object. So if I draw that line down there, we see that it forms an X. Now the intersection of that, those two X's ought to be where the balance point for this, for this object is. And if I put my finger there and hold it in place, we indeed have found that center of mass. Now for a simple shape like this, pretty easy, it follows and conforms to what we expect. Now, does it work for an irregular object like this one? Well, if we take the irregular object, we see that it also establishes equilibrium when we hold it in place. So if we take our plumb line, once again, and we hold it over the object, a little bit hard to see because the string is so thin, we see that it indeed has two point, it does indeed make a line, an axis, axis of equilibrium. And so we'll draw that line on the shape. So let me just mark that here. Now the odd thing about this line is that it goes over regions where there is no cardboard because of the irregular shape. And this can be fine. The axis doesn't have to pass through all of the shape as long as you can make it a draw nice clear line, that's all we need. Now, this was based on this point of hanging. If we change our point, we can get a second axis of equilibrium. And the intersection of those two things will be our center of mass. Now I'm gonna choose one of these sort of weird branches right here. And then I'm gonna drop my plumb line again, like so. Then I'm just gonna let the whole thing settle up. And we can see that there's an intersection point emerging. So I'm gonna mark two points. Mark a point there, mark a point there and then draw that with my straight edge. 
And again, we go over a section of the cardboard that is hollow. That's fine. We just skip over it and maintain the line and draw all the way through. And we do see that there's an intersection here. That intersection then should be the balance point. Let's try it out. Lo and behold, it does indeed work. So this method can be used to find the center of mass for any object. Now, there are some unfortunate cases where you may find a balance point for an object, but it actually isn't on the object itself. Such cases are easily identified in the case of something that's hollow, like this shape. Obviously, if this were a regular rectangle like this, you'd expect the center of mass to be right in the middle, just like we saw for the square of the triangle. But the issue is, is that this center part has been cut out. So even though there is a center of mass here, we can't actually use it as a balance point because it's not physically there. So this is a curious thing about a center of mass. It can be able to be defined by this method, but you may not actually be able to see it because it's not physically present inside of the object. Another kind of object that does this sort of thing is one of these irregular objects like so. And if I were to hang my plumb line in two different places, we'd find that it would intersect somewhere in the region of space right here in the middle. Again, not something that you can physically balance with, but it is something that physically exists regardless. Now, if you have an irregular shape like this, is there any way to change it so that the balance point does end up on the shape itself? Yes, but you have to uh, cheat a little bit. What we've been working with are objects of constant and uniform density. So what we do is, we add a little bit of extra mass to one of these sides to move the balance point into there. Now, to do this, this experiment, all you need to do is add a little bit of mass. In this case, I have a couple quarters. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the piece of cardboard and tape the quarters to them just to increase the mass on this shape. So this will take me a few seconds, so just bear with me. Just gonna add four quarters here, just to make sure I get enough mass to move that center of mass from that invisible point in space back onto the object. So, I've taped four quarters here to the edge of this, I guess it's sort of like a hockey stick. And so the addition of this mass, what it has done is made this part of the hockey stick to be more dense than the other parts of it. The result of that is we have moved, we're going to move the center of mass from this invisible point here, hopefully onto the shape itself. Now there's only one good way to test that, aside from just sticking your finger at random points, we go back to our plumb line and we try this again. I'm going to choose this point here. And when I hang it from this point, you see that its balance, its equilibrium position is very different than what it was. And when I hang the plumb line, now we see that most of the line is on the shape again. So if I draw that line, It's not freehand this time. You can actually see it's mostly on the shape. Now we choose a second point. And again, we see that the overall position of the object has changed from what we were holding at previously. Again, we put the plumb line here. And we see that there is sort of an intersection occurring between these two things right at that corner. So it looks like we have added enough mass to move that balance point back onto the shape. So we'll give it a try. 
and voila, we have actually succeeded. So this is something that is simple. You can try it at home. All you need is a piece of cardboard that you can cut out, a weight attached to a piece of string, a Sharpie, some coins, and some tape. And you can start having fun with this idea of center of mass.